Okay, so this will be fun. So we're just going to go through a bunch of questions basically about how to reboot, is that right? Yeah, how to do a proper juice fast. Mm -hmm. So my viewers, they are passionate about juicing and you are the OG juicing king. You're no. from the movie. The there, were, there were people juicing well before me, but I, I was lucky that my film came out right when Netflix popped. Yeah. You know, in life, Julian, sometimes you get really lucky. And uh, you know, when I had the first idea for this movie, uh, DVD is what I thought people would be watching it on. There was a movie called The Secret. You might remember that. It changed my life. But that was out on DVD and Oprah was giving that a big run on her show. And uh, my sort of aspiration and dream was maybe one day, maybe 100,000 people would buy the DVD and that would be great. Little did I know that 30 million people would watch it on Netflix streaming. I mean, it was crazy. Stop. Wow. And the experience changed your life. 60 days juicing, right? You had health problems and it transformed that. I'm always hesitant just to put it on to the 60 days only because you're different to me. You know, we're all different. Mm -hmm. Kevin behind the camera. We all have different makeups in our constitution. And I was broken. That's how I sort of like to refer to it, Julian, as opposed to having health problems. I, I kind of feel I'm a quite a binary person. You're either whole or you're broken, you know? And each day you can ask yourself that question. Am I whole today or am I broken? Wow. And if you're broken, then you've got to like say, well, what's my responsibility to try and get whole? Or am I just going to outsource my health to doctors and the pharmaceutical corporations? I mean, or am I going to take responsibility? And for a good number of my years, <laughs> probably up until when I was 40, I was outsourcing it to mm -hmm. others. And so when I decided to change my life and take responsibility and become the CEO of my own health, uh, that's when I had the idea of putting a camera on me to follow me around. So, you know, the real commitment I made was two years of eating plants, Julian. It wasn't the juicing part. The juicing part came a little bit later. I, I'd made my mind up that I was going to do two years of just having fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and seeds. Mm -hmm. I, I'd figured out that I tried so many other things in my in my life from crazy abstract things, but the real the real focus was what I was putting into my body. And so, to supercharge that two year journey, I had been focusing on water fasting and the powers of water fasting, but I didn't want to go that extreme. So, I took um, the middle ground, which was juice fasting, like extract out all those nutrients from the plants and drink that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like drinking water filtered through plants, if you really think about it. So it's like it's like the true mineral water. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the idea was to do maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 40, and then eventually I landed on 60 days. So two months to supercharge my two year journey. And what ended up happening was 60 days of juice and three months of plants. So it was five months in total. I was off all meds that I'd been on for eight years before and been very sick with a disease called chronic urticaria angioedema, mm -hmm. which is just a fancy way of saying chronic hives. So that worked for me. Now, let's pretend for a minute you had chronic hives. Mm -hmm. You might only need 30 days of juice and two months of plants. Mm -hmm. You know, you might need double what I did. I can't just say because I did exactly that, that that's going to transfer over to everybody else. But yeah. what I can be the authority <laughs> on is me. And that was in 2007. So, you know, we're talking 16 years ago and that, that illness has never reared its ugly head ever again. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, it's great. I love that. Gave me goosebumps, that story. And I love the part about being whole. It's amazing. Well, let's get into the how to do a proper juice fast. And from your experience, I know, like you said, mm. like everybody's different. But from your perspective, answering these questions, of course, everybody has to take that from their own point of view. But so the first question is, what can people expect generally if they take on a juice fast? Well, um, what can they expect? Well, the outcome uh, is going to be something that I would, you know, I would talk about the outcome. If, they, if you're looking at an expectation, let's talk about the outcome. The outcome, I think, is going to be incredibly positive. The actual doing it, it's really hard. It's really tough, particularly in the beginning. It does get easier, mm -hmm. but you people need to understand that what they're taking on is they're doing something that really goes against all the instincts that have kept us homo sapiens, humanoids, uh, at the top of the food chain on planet Earth. I mean, survival mechanisms, our, our senses, if you like, our sight, our hearing, our smell, our touch, our taste, they are all driven around survival of food, of air, of water, mm -hmm. uh, and of sleep. These are those four main um, ingredients to life that if you take away one of those, you can't survive. Now, interestingly, you know, we know that air 
it's probably five, six minutes for most people. You know, some of these really big divers who go down in the depths of all parts of the ocean, maybe mm -hmm. longer, mm -hmm. but five or six minutes without air, and it's not a, it's not a good outcome, Julian, no. right? <laughs> water, yeah. depending on where you are on planet Earth, two weeks to three weeks without water is a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Food, it's a bit longer. Believe it or not, if you go and Google and, and research these, um, these people who did the starvation mm -hmm. uh, uh, diets and, you know, for... Uh, for uh, political reasons, you know, these political mm -hmm. um, famines, mm -hmm. 180 uh, to 280 day ranges. So you're talking about six months to nine months for the average human without any food whatsoever to survive. So wow. we actually can go a long time. It's not healthy to do that no, at no, all because no, no, no. yeah. you will die. Yeah. But food is the one that you can go with the, out the longest. Sleep, 10, 11 days. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good outcome. No, no, no. So, so when you actually juice fast, you are breaking into that psyche of the routine of having a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner, the routine of, of what it's like to prepare a meal, to go to the shop, to celebrate with others. Think about how many times you meet people mm -hmm. and you go and do something and all you do is go for a walk. That's mm -hmm. rare. Most of us go and meet somebody and celebrate and they break energy. Yeah. They have something that they're gonna consume. Some, some caloric energy goes into their system when they're meeting somebody, mm -hmm. socializing, having fun, celebrating, watching sport, etc. These, This is all about consumption. And so, you know, you, you really are going against um, the grain when you attempt psychologically to start doing a juice fast. So, yeah. so, so my tip to people is, you know, try, try setting a, 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 an amount of time that is achievable, not that you're gonna fail on. So for example, you know, try and do a day of juicing or try and do a, a breakfast and a lunch where you juice and a meal and do that for three or four days. Mm -hmm. Just get used to the idea of having one meal a day, mm -hmm. build up to it. Start maybe, that be your first five days that you give it a go and then, Maybe in a couple of months you come back and say, you know what, I think I'm ready for five days of just juice. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't want people to do like one or two days. I think you've got to go past three. Mm -hmm. I think you really need to put a minimum of five in. Um, preparing yourself for that fast in that moment is very important to have a lot of high fiber foods. You don't want to go and have a highly processed meal the night before you start a juice fast because you haven't got a lot of fiber to push through the, um, the, the waste through your bowel, and you may get blogged up, you may, you may feel bloated, you, you, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be in a large area of discomfort because you're not putting a lot of, of uh, soluble fiber, um, or insoluble fiber, I should say, through the system. You've got a lot of soluble fiber in the juice, but not a lot of insoluble. In other words, the chunkier, bigger fiber. Mm -hmm. So these are things you wanna focus on pre the start. One thing I also suggest people to do, Julian, is to, do a video to themselves um, of why they're doing this. So that mm -hmm. during the, the journey, when things get tough, you have this a chance to sort of listen to yourself as to the reason why you're here and why you're doing this. So I think that's always valuable. Um, bring a friend in, get someone who supports you, have them watch your back. Mm -hmm. um, on the Joe Cross community on Facebook, there's a huge bunch of juicers that are there and they're always juicing. and. You get a lot of support online if you can't find someone physically. Uh, if you've got a family, if you've got a, a, a partner, if you're used to living with people that are eating all the time, that's doubly hard mm -hmm. because you've got to prepare meals. So I take my hat off to all the people that do that. That's tough. I don't know if I could do that, to be honest. <laughs> I'm right. kind of lucky that I live by myself and I'm able to do this. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to make your juices three, three days out and store them so that the first three days you've got everything done and made and you're ready to go and you've got them all numbered. Because on the night before you start a five day, say juice fast, you could make all your juices for three days. So then when you're feeling a bit lethargic, feeling a bit tired, when, you've, when you're missing your caffeine, when you've got like a little bit of a headache, because you are, mm -hmm. you are gonna go through some withdrawals depending on what your diet was like. If it's the normal standard American diet, you're gonna not wanna to be too far from a bathroom, you know, for those first couple of days. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna go straight through you. The, the, the alkaline juice that you're, you're, you're putting into your system is really powerful. And that's gonna break yeah. away a lot of your bowel material and, and, and blast through. 
assuming you've got some fiber in there, like I said. Um, so that's how I would that's how I would get ready. That's the psychological yeah. steps at the beginning. That's great. You answered a lot of questions already. That's amazing. And the bathroom thing, that's a big thing. People think, oh, I have a corporate job, I have to work. Like, I'm not gonna take all these trips to the bathroom. So do you think that's a deal breaker for people who live jobs that- Yeah, so, so, so let's get smart about this. I mean, I wouldn't start a juice fast where you're going to work the next day. Like, start it on, yeah. like a, on a Saturday or a Sunday, or if you have a day off on a Monday or a Tuesday, do it where you're gonna be home for the first couple of days, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, like, it doesn't have to be while you're, um, you know, if you're a truck driver driving across the country, you're making many stops. Yeah. Uh, but listen, after a couple of days, that stops because you're not putting enough uh, material in for that to keep going. So you'll yeah. you'll find that on a longer fast, it might be three days or four days between stools. Okay. And how much material do people know how to put in? Like how much juice? A lot of people say about four of these, 32 ounce a day. But to me, that's not enough. When I juice fast, I yeah. drink like eight to 12. How many did you drink? Yeah, yeah look, so once again, everybody is different. And it really comes down to a personal preference, right? So, so I can go on a juice fast where I can have two of these, for example, in a day. And as long as I'm drinking a lot of water, I'm completely satisfied. I feel great. If all I did was have two of these without the water, I'm going to be dehydrated and it's not going to be good. So I think it comes down to always what's the water uptake like? Now, some people prefer to juice only and not drink water during a fast, and that's totally fine because inside our, our bottles of juice here, this is 99.999 and throwing a few more nines, water. The reason why it has a color to it is these are the phytonutrients. This is the nutrition part that's come from the plant. That's what was made by the sun, made with the combination of the nitrogen and the oxygen in our atmosphere and the minerals in the soil that grew that plant that able to take that pumpkin or carrot or orange, whatever it was that we got that beautiful orange color out of. Mm -hmm. And the types of nutrients that are in there are very different to say what we have when we look at our yellow color because the color difference, and when you say take say some pomegranates and you look at those reds, we are dealing with a whole different subset of nutrients and it's important that during our fast, during our everyday life, that we get as much color in our diet as possible because color is why, that's why all of you out there seeing color. That's why we are, have this third of our brain focusing on color. It's not because of the color TVs, it's because mm -hmm. of our food. And so that's a survival mechanism. So we just don't eat the same color over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's what, that, that's the beauty about why these plants they pop to us. Wow, I love that, amazing. And you're on the Nama Juicer, so somebody was asking what yeah. what juicer to buy, is it worth it to get a good one? What juicer do you recommend? Well, I mean, I recommend the J2 now, but you know, be to be honest, I'm a, I'm a sort of a founder and a partner in this company. And so, you know, after using a centrifugal juicer for so many years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and this is another thing I say, if you've got a juicer at home that works for you, great. Don't don't run out and buy one of these because Joe said so. Yeah. But if you're looking for a new one, then I'd say, please take a look and do the reviews and check out the Nama J2, check out the original Nama, which I love, and uh, keep an eye on what we're doing at Nama because we've got some exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. So this juicer is, it retails around $5.99, but if you go to Jillian's blog, she will have a uh, code up most of the time, and you can buy it through Jillian, just put her code and her number down, and you'll get a discount. And there's also payment plans, which is great. But the J2 for me, the reason why I love it is because it has this huge hopper here, this enables us to, to open up, and we can load in. I mean, I can put a whole bunch of apples in here like this. I mean, three four, and I'm not even cutting these apples, and then I can close this down. And if I turn this on now like this, go bang, which we'll do just while we're talking, you can see that those five apples, without me having to prep, without me having to do anything at all, mm -hmm. they are being chopped inside by our blades. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna go down into the chamber, and we're gonna extract out all of the beautiful water that's trapped in this, in, in our, in our uh, apple, so there's a lot of water in here, and what we're doing now is we're going to find that water. So if, if my hands were strong enough to press this together and squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it into the minutiae, mm -hmm. and I could capture it in a, in, a, um, in a jar, 
then I wouldn't need a juicer. Mm -hmm. But I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> my hands aren't, can do that, right? my hands aren't no. strong enough. Who could so, actually do that? So that's what the J2 does. And you can sort of see down here, this is where I'll just take out our little strainer that we have to the side. I'll get rid of that and just put that there. And you can sort of see, if you come down here, you can see that this, this water is being extracted out of, our, out of our apples. And I'll just show you how that looks when we open up. And you can just sort of see that pours in. Now, the consistency... The consistency of that, I'll just get a uh, mason jar and I'll, a bottle and I'll be able to show you. Staying in nice and tight here. And just take a look at that and you can see that if you watch me pour this, you'll see how that's, it's just like water. It's not a smoothie. It's not a blended, it's not a blended drink. It is water and if I was to I used to do this on tour, Gillian. If I lay you on your back mm -hmm. on a bench and blindfolded you and I poured this juice over your forehead, <laughs> you wouldn't know if it was water or juice. True, yeah. You would have no idea because no. it is mostly, mostly water. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to which juicer you want to use, I thoroughly recommend the J2 because... You want to extract out as much nutrition as possible from your plants. You know, produce is expensive. Mm -hmm. A lot of people travel a long way to go to their farmer. They, they go to their farmer's market. They go to their local CEO. They, they, they really make an effort. So you don't want to be throwing out on, the, on the, the pulp side. You don't want to be throwing out a lot of nutrition in here. The great thing about the J2 is this stuff is super dry and it's been actually extracted. I mean, if I try to, if I try to get anything here like this, you know, there's no moisture left there. It's all taken out. That's the beauty about what happens in the chamber with the auger. The reality is, is that in the long run, if you leave 25% of your juice in your fiber, mm -hmm. it doesn't take long before as many juices you've had, before the amount of waste here, you would have so much more juice on this side. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is very much, to my, in my mind, about getting as much of, much of Mother Nature's best as possible. And, you know, when you take a pure apple juice like this, what we've effectively done is we've taken those four apples, like four or five, I can't remember how many mm -hmm. I put in. Mm -hmm. They're little ones too. Well, these are, these are babies, yes. Yeah. But that's the before and this is the after. And so what are you going to do? You're going to take, if I, if I put these in my hand here and hold up four apples, what's easier, to eat these four apples or to drink this juice. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it hits your cells on another level. Well, it, it's a great feeling, the mm -hmm. taste. But, yeah. but well, I, you know, from a, just from a scientific point of view, you are getting so much more nutrition. Yeah, and okay, with the juicer. So when you did your 60 days, you even took your juicer on the road, right? Like you were dedicated. I did, back in, that was, that's a long time ago. That was 16 years ago. Yeah, and so people can do that, right? Like People can watch the movie, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. It's yeah. on RebootWithJoe.com. He's got to sign up at the newsletter and movies are free. Yep. But and I, I, anyone who hasn't seen it, I would say, hey, go and watch the movie because that's a great way to get fired up for juice fast. Right? Yeah. That, that's a great motivation tool. Um, but I did take my juicer with me. But, you know, I, I, what I did was something really extreme. And people don't need to do 60 days. They don't need to take the machine on the road. Try to start off with five or 10 days from your home. You know, if you've tried a lot of things and you've got a chronic illness and you are broken, it, it, it's worth a shot. Yeah. You know? There's, there is so many... Um, uh, things in this world today that we consume that we really don't know what we're putting in our body mm -hmm. and our bodies are super sensitive mm -hmm. and even this is just as recently as three days ago you know I have uh, I was uh, I'm not going to say allergic but intolerant to something mm -hmm. and I was blocking up in the head and I was actually even thinking geez I called Jillian because I don't know if I'm even going to be able to talk properly on, on, wow. on our, on our uh, filming day but what I what did I do Jeez. I just juiced yesterday Oh. Just to sort of give me a chance to get on top, so I didn't need to cancel on you, and you know, I can breathe through my nose today. Yeah, so amazing. obviously something I had Monday, Tuesday, whatever, made me feel blocked up, and it stayed with me for forty-eight hours. Yeah. So even those things today, I've got to check and watch, and I think it could be pollen in the air. I noticed I went to New York recently, and I was really stuffed up. Aeroplanes don't help, of course, with all the AC and everything. But hey. That's the life we live in, you know. We mm -hmm. want to. We can't complain. We've just got to work out ways that we can we can manage around it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so, what to do? Like when the 
Cravings are tough or when you're feeling like crap and you want to be committed, but you just feel like giving into your body. Well, you pull that video up that you did of yourself and you look at yourself and then oh, yeah. if that's not enough, you call your friend, you know, phone a friend. Um, if that's not enough, then you really ask yourself, well, why are you doing this? You know, and, and can you wait 24 hours? And one of the things I like to do also is just think about what was I doing a week ago? Oh, I was at that place. I was eating that. And in a week's time, that was kind of like so quick and mm -hmm. a week will come by quickly. Mm -hmm. I also try to drink a lot of water. I maybe try and listen to some music. I put a podcast on that I might be interested in. I put some show TV on. I try and meditate. I try and lie on the ground and sleep. I try and maybe go get a massage, go, go treat myself to something where I'm going to be distracted from the idea of food because... You know, you can, as I said earlier, go a long time without food. Mm -hmm. And this is just your body's mechanism for reminding you to eat. Um, you know, Julian, it would be fantastic if you never got hungry. Just think mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, that would be easy. Think about how much money you would save. Mm -hmm. Think about how much time you would have if you never got hungry. Mm -hmm. Now, some people have hit their head and they lose all hunger. Mm -hmm. They've got to have an alarm to remind themselves to eat mm -hmm. because they don't have that hunger pain. Now... That's not great. So realistically, we don't want to lose that because we could die. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. But it would be great if we could simmer down those hunger pangs. Mm -hmm. And you talked about money. So do you think there's ways people can keep it on a budget? And when you did the 60 days, was it like crazy expensive or not like compared to how you usually ate? Well, that comes down to how much water you prepare to, you know, what's your ratio of water and juice. Okay. Because you can also take a juice like this. Uh, now, this is pure apple. We don't recommend just one fruit we like to put some veggies in but you could you could make i could easily make two servings of this by adding water good point so you can dilute down your juice and add water um that's an easy way but look at the end of the day you got to think about what's the most important thing in your life and mm -hmm. it is your health so you know you go into a bar you have a cocktail sometimes it's 12 bucks or 13 bucks for a cocktail depending on which city you're in sometimes a lot more mm -hmm. and you got to think about you know well where are my priorities I do understand that people on a budget, it's tough, but hey, if you can get healthy and you can get strong and you can get off your medication and you can get that time back that you spend all that time with the doctors, you can earn more money. Mm -hmm. You can be more focused. You can have a much happier life. Mm -hmm. Okay, great answer. And what about socially? Do you think people should just, if they're going to commit to a juice fast, avoid social situations? In the first for... three days, yes. Yeah, okay. After that, you'll find that you're stronger mm -hmm. and then you'll go there and you'll inspire people and people will want to, you'll become the center of attention. So if you don't like being the center of attention, stay home. Yeah. But if you are happy with that, then go out because everyone's going to be saying, what are you doing, Julian? I mean, you know, you rock up with his juice to a barbecue. You're going to eat, no thanks, I'm juicing. Well, tell me about it. And then you get a chance to stand on your soapbox. So true. Been through that. Okay. And so as far as juices go, like how do you, for you, and what do you recommend or what you did, like what ratio of fruits to greens? About 80, excuse me, about 80-20. 80, 20, 80 okay. veg, 20 uh, fruit. Yeah. Okay. And people always ask, can I still drink tea or coffee or nut milks on a juice fast? So... Uh, the answer is you can do anything you like on a juice fast because it's yours. Mm -hmm. However, I think that trying to limit caffeine is a good idea. I, I think if you wanted to have like a peppermint tea or some herbal tea because you want something warm, it's totally fine. But the idea of having the caffeine, that sort of goes against the, uh, the, the value of your juice fast. However, and I've had some people like this, if at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to be able to get them through it is by having a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. I say then do it. True. Do good the point. 10 days. Yeah. Because you, the benefits of getting everything else out of the system and supercharging the nutrients, you are going to have a positive effect. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, oh, forget that, that didn't work. You mm -hmm. will still get through it. So it's not a case of there is this way and there's another way and you've got to do it Joe's way and mm -hmm. the other way is wrong. That, that, that is not what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And what do you think about supplements and checking blood work? During a fast or yeah. before? So, so I think it's a bit difficult doing, um, first of all, I don't do supplements during a fast. If you're taking supplements because that's your regime, then continue to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not gonna say, oh, because you're doing this, you need a supplement. The one, the one caveat to that is that if you're going to go longer than 15 days, then I do advise to add some pea protein into your juice. We have found that a lot of women, not so much men, uh, suffer some hair loss after mm -hmm. 15 days if they go for a long extended juice fast. Mm -hmm. Not all, but enough for us to, to learn that we put out a bit of a disclaimer to say, hey, add some pea protein in if you're going to go more than 15 days. Wow. Um, when it comes to blood work, 
look, I'm a big fan of blood work. I get my bloods done every six months. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's enough. I don't need to do them during a fast because I'm monitoring them six mm -hmm. monthly. Uh, if you haven't had your blood work done, I advise you to go out and get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about pasteurized juices? So people are like, oh, Jillian, can I just pick up regular juices from the grocery store? Do you think those are as effective? Yeah. So you can, you can get a, what's called HPP. So high pressure processing or high pressure pasteurization. Mm -hmm. Totally fine with that. That's, that is juice that has been put in a hyperbaric chamber. Mm -hmm. That is juice that has not been heated at any time. It's always been cold. The whole idea what we don't want is we don't want heated juice. When we heat our juice, we kill our nutrients, we leave our sugars behind. Mm -hmm. So we're just having basically sugar water. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to do is not heat anything in our, um, our juice world. Okay. So HPP, if you look for that, um, a good example of that is the Evolution brand owned by Starbucks. And there's a bunch of others out there that you can, you can find. Uh, look for the HPP. Um, okay. Little HPP writing on the on the bottle. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And in your opinion, do you think people should exercise on a juice fast, or do you think they should take it as a time for rest and not engage in like going to the gym and stuff? Yeah. So I think exercise is important on a juice fast, but it's a certain type of exercise. I don't think there's any benefit in lifting. I think there's a lot of benefit in stretching. There's a lot of benefit in walking. Um, cardio can be done on a juice fast if that's what you love doing. But obviously you want to measure those first couple of days, take it easy because your body's repairing and it's going through a stage where it needs to rest and restore. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it is certainly a good thing and I recommend it, but I don't, lifting, lifting weights requires um, the proteins to be in the system to rebuild that muscle and you don't have enough protein. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Okay, so when people go to the grocery store, they say, Jill, how do I know how much to buy? How do I know what to buy for the juice fast? So what do you recommend? Like enough for three days, enough for like a week or like how buy in bulk or what do you think? Mm. Well, I'm hoping that before they've done their juice fast, they've already been juicing so they've got mm -hmm. used to it and they really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone who is going to be the, going to the supermarket for the first time to buy produce on a juice fast, I'd say, whoa, let's go back to what we talked about earlier. Let's, let's maybe juice for a breakfast, juice for a lunch. Let's get into it first. Mm -hmm. So by the time you start your juice fast, you kind of should know pretty much what you like, what recipes you like, how much you need to buy. Uh, I, I don't think you need to be all organic all the time. I, I, obviously, if you've got the money, that's great, but you don't have to be. Um, there are some great uh, websites out there that have the, the Clean 15, the Dirty Dozen, mm -hmm. and so on that you can look at. I think it's on the, the um, uh, World Health Organization. Uh, the The That's it, Environmental Working Group, yeah. right? They, they have that. So you can check out those and, and you know, make sure you wash your produce when you get home. Give it a really good clean. You don't know where it's been. You don't know what's been crawling all over it. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure because this is your nutrition. This is what you're going to be putting in your body for the next five, 10 days, depending on how long you're going, 15 days. You know, we do a thing called the 10 day guided reboot. It's a 15 day guided reboot at Reboot with Joe, where people sign up and have a coach and everyone goes through. We don't start people juicing until day six. You know, first five days, it's eating. It's mm -hmm. like a plan. It's a recipe plan with some juice. We don't go to all juice only until day six because mm -hmm. we want to get people really into that comfort zone of being able to manage it. So when you go to a store, I think that it's, uh, it's about making sure you've got the different colors. There's five colors, primary colors to the fruit and vegetable world. There's purple, red, yellow, green, and orange. You want to make sure you're occupying a lot of those colors cool. and get them in the veggies and in the fruits. You know, you can, you can uh, juice uh, sweet potato. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What is sweet potato good with? I tried it alone once. Uh, I think it's not good. No, no, not alone, but sweet potato with carrot and apple is really good. Yeah. Okay, cool. And how long did it take you to start feeling good? Do you remember? Because uh, it, it takes was about, bad at first, right? It takes about, depending on, once again, everyone's different. Yeah. On average, by the fourth day, people are feeling great. Cool. It's equivalent to climbing a mountain. Think about the first the first days, you're stiff, you're sore, you're tired, you're trying to get up, you know. But then you get the momentum, you get going. And then all of a sudden the view from the top's beautiful. Yeah. And so you, you just, it's worth it. And yeah. once you've achieved that goal, you feel good about yourself. Yeah. And all those negative conversations inside and you, you know, as you're probably aware, a lot of people have emotional journeys when they're, when they're on a fast. And that emotion can play a huge role in our lives. And they, you know, we all have the voice inside, that's the negative voice, we all have the positive mm -hmm. voice. That, mm -hmm. That's kind of what it's like being human. And who we listen to the most is our choice. When you are putting a lot of garbage into your system, when you eat a lot of crap, when you don't exercise, when you don't sleep well, when you are having um, fights with your partner, your family, with work, when you don't feel useful, when 
you know, all of these things, that negative voice is really loud. And it's very difficult to wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to have some green juice. <laughs> right? When the negative voice is so loud, like banging away there with a sledgehammer. So the idea of these fasts, it really is to break that, break that cycle and, and to give yourself a shot at allowing that positive voice to stand up and be heard. And once you do a five, 10 day fast, you'll find that that voice will stay with you afterwards as long as you stay true to mother nature and the plants. And you know, like you wanna, like there's two relationships in your life that I always look at when people say to me they're broken. You know, there's a relationship with yourself and the relationship with mother nature. So you need both of those to be in a good place to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, well said. And okay, so what about breaking the fast? When it's time to end the fast, people are like, I'm done. How do you recommend? Simplest way is to eat what you've been juicing. Okay. So whatever you've been juicing, start eating it. So for example, you have some apples, have some lemon, have, have a great salad, go and buy huge, beautiful butter lettuce, put some um, uh, olive oil on top and just, just make, um, you know, with some orange and, mm -hmm. and nuts and whatever, whatever you feel from the plant world is what I do. I, I don't think you want to break it with processed food. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a bit of a waste going, yeah. going to something that doesn't have that value in it. So raw is good. Um, if you're going to have something cooked because it's winter and you feel like you want to, then um, a baked uh, sweet potato or a baked pumpkin, um, that's a really good thing to use as well. Uh, it, it really, you use your common sense. And think about you're on the land, you've got water and fire, and you've got a whole farm of anything you can choose. So what would you use with water, fire, and a garden? Mm -hmm. And use that for the first two or three days, and then slowly you can introduce some of your proteins. If you like fish, uh, chicken, meats, depending on what your dietary habits are, you can then bring those in. Um, having a steak or having something that's high in fat uh, straight out of the gate without, without a lot of fiber in it is not a great idea because you'll actually feel a bit crook. You, your stomach has shrunk and um, your body is now really used to these micronutrients. So you want to just keep, it's kind of like you crave them in a way. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, and, and also another tip which I forgot to mention is whatever you crave the most <laughs> is probably the thing that's doing the most damage to you. Good point. So think about it from a psychological point of view. Yeah. Wow. Now for me, that's sushi. All right. Now <laughs> it's not the sushi that I crave. It's the salt. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's that it's that salt in the soy sauce. So I now am pretty good at limiting my my uh, soy sauce. I, I don't have as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, I've loved this. This has been amazing, and you've given me so many answers that I feel like I've never heard before from you or from anyone else, and just put things into perspective in an inspiring, amazing way. Oh, you're so, welcome, Julie. Thanks, and thanks for welcoming us into your kitchen. Oh, you're welcome. Well, make sure if anyone's interested, go over to Reboot with Joe and check out our yeah. guided Reboot. It's over there, and check that out. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Welcome. Uh, as you can see, my kitchen is not always like this. We don't always have lights and everything set up. I actually tend to do my juicing over in this corner, but hey, it's lovely when a camera's here to get out the machine and break out and make some beautiful juice. Yeah, and in the next video, you're going to show us how to make your favorite juice, right? I am. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. Juice on, Julie. Yeah, juice All on. right. <laughs>